All right, so we're gonna talk about neurons and the nervous system. So when we talk about a neuron, we're talking about a nerve cell um, and they have a specific structure that you need to look at. These are little messengers uh, throughout your body, but specifically in your brain. They are both a chemical response and an electrical response. Um, because of how they carry it, they have to have both. Uh, you're gonna have two different types of neurons, or at least how they are looked at. We're gonna have the ones that carry away from the brain. So those are your muscle movements, the ones that you voluntarily make. And then you've got the ones that are bringing it to your brain. So you're looking at your basically your five senses. Um, and then they will even break down further, but those are the overreaching way that you have to look at a neuron. Is it going to the brain or away from the brain? So when we're looking at the part of a neuron, there are many different parts. We're gonna focus on these. We have the dendrites. Um, so those are going to be at the end. You've got two ends. Um, at one end, we'll, we'll say left side for this point. Uh, these are the fibers that are going to um, send the message away. You've got your cell body, which contains the nucleus. This is the brain of the cell. A neuron is just a cell. This is about as scientific as we'll get um, in breaking down certain things is this unit. Uh, so the cell body is gonna have the brain. It's gonna tell the neuron or the message which way to go. Is it going out the dendrite to the left or is it gonna go the other direction? You've got your axon. Now this is the piece that brings the information to the right for our purposes. Uh, this is the, the way that it's gonna send it out. Another way that sends out two doors, same thing. Um, and then we have the axon terminals. Now the axon terminals are on the right-hand side and these are going to send some of the information out as well. Um, if you think about it where, if I was to draw a picture, it's an a hand or an arm with hands on both sides. Um, the left hand side of the dendrite is going to be larger and then the axon terminals are going to be smaller uh, just because of how the information goes out. So let's look at it. You've got your dendrite on the left and then you've got your axon. Now the axon has to be Con, um, contained in a protective layer uh, and so you're going to have the myelin or myelin sheath. Um, you've got your axon ending or your axon terminal and you have to make sure that within the neuron there are other pieces uh, like the electrical pieces and the energy and all of that that go through it. This is the basic look of it. Now with the, the neurons you've also got the spaces in between the neurons. You're not going to have, it's called a synapse um, or a synaptic cleft or just a cleft. Now, neurons don't intertwine like a hand, high hands. Um, they're going to touch like this. They're not actually going to touch. So you've got, that's why you have the electrical energy because the information has to jump. Now, again, you have your ascending and descending. Think of it uh, away from the brain or to the brain. So are you going up to the brain or are you going down to the muscles? You've also got your neurotransmitters. Um, these are the chemicals that make the electrical currents start and stop. Um, and without those neurotransmitters, you're not gonna be able, the neurons themselves aren't going to be able to continue to receive or send messages. This is like the pulley system making it go. So again, to the brain, away from the brain. Um, and you've got your interneurons, Lots of really big words. I would suggest writing, going through this slowly and writing these words down. Um, these, the interneurons are going to go between um, and they're only going to be between two neurons. So it's interneurons and neurotransmitters are similar but not the same. All right, so now we have two different types of nervous systems. The neurons are in between in all of the brain cells, but we've got two different systems in our body that makes our body go. Um, and we, so we've got your central nervous system, which is going to be up here and straight down. It's the brain and spinal cord. Um, this is part of the first thing that's created when you're, when you're in your utero. Uh, and then everything else comes later. You've got your peripheral nervous system or your PNS, and that's all of your extra stuff, 
all of your extremities. Um, your organs are going to be in that as well, minus uh, your heart and your lungs. Now, you also have, so we've got the central nervous system, you've got um, your peripheral nervous system. So these two, now you have to figure out what is voluntary. What do you perf like? You choose to do? It is part of the peripheral nervous system, the PNS. Um, it's called the somatic nervous system. This is, all right, I want to move my hand to the cup. That is a voluntary system. Now you're involuntary system is going to be automatic nervous system, um, breathing, heartbeat, your digestion even um, is going to be part of that automatic, something that you do. <clears throat> You've got your sympathetic nervous system. Now this is your fight or flight um, and flight meaning flee, just like your reading said. Um, this is going to shut down your extra stuff that you don't need to survive, um, which is why during a panic moment, you aren't going to be thinking about hunger. You're not going to th be thinking about any type of um, extra stuff. And why scientists actually believe during a time of stress or craziness, your body's not going to allow you, and this goes into some other things as well, but it's your, not, your body's not going to allow you to reproduce. Um, and then you've got your parasympathetic nervous system. This is conserving the energy. Um, so this is when you are running, 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 and you stop and your breathing eventually goes back into a, north, a normal rhythm and you are going to basically see um, how your body responds. Uh, you can train your body a little bit, but you're not going to have full control. The sympathetic nervous system is also, if you have panic attacks, your sympathetic nervous system is going to kick into overdrive for whatever's making you panic. So if we look at an actual breakdown, We've got, I'm hoping you guys can see this, hold on, go up a little bit. Um, we've got the sympathetic, look. So we've got eyes, so, uh, your, your saliva, um, saliva glands, you've got your heart, lungs, stomach, liver. These are things that are going to happen. Um, and you've got your parasympathetic. They overlap. Look how they overlap. They are going to. So your sympathetic is going to make it go up and your parasympathetic is going to make it go down. Um, if you're freaking out for something, you're typically not going to have to use the bathroom, which is what this means. But as soon as you calm down, you are going to need to use the bathroom pretty quickly. Um, and the same thing for your, for your uh, stomach and your liver. And it's going to control the how quickly they happen. So those are all the pieces of the outside now the brain itself has a bunch of different parts and if you've done the reading then you know that the brain is pretty unknown because it is so complex now they say it's about 100 billion neurons they don't know for sure because once somebody dies and you're able to uh, cut their brain open basically if they've uh, sent it to science the neurons are no longer active. Um, there are, depending on which uh, way you look at the brain, you can have these three major parts, the cere cere cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. Now, these, again, are part of that piece that's created at first when you are in utero, in your, your mother's belly. Um, so when you're looking at the first ultrasound, please let that be very, very late in your, um, in your future. Um, but these are the first things that they're going to be able to see along with the heartbeat. So when we look at that, <clears throat> we have the three right here, major parts. And then we have the three structures, the hindbrained, midbrain, and forebrain. Um, <clears throat> some scientists believe this more often just because of how it's put together. It's all about an organizational thing um, and what name do you want to put on it. It's all kind of the same though. You work together or it works together to make uh, your body and your system to work at the best result with the best re results.
Now, when we're looking at it, <clears throat> down here, brain stem is going to be first. Now, if you think of this as, a, um, as animals, uh, the brain stem is the only thing a snake has. Um, so they are, this is all about survival of the fittest. Once we get into the cerebellum, we are going to go into a little bit of a higher thinking animal. Um, most mammals are going to have a, have a cerebellum just because of the balance and the pieces that go with it. And we've got the cerebrum up top. Uh, this is going to be where you are you. Um, and then when we break down the brain, we can break it down by lobes. We can break it down by um, pieces. What do they uh, attach to? And that's what we'll look at. Now, the cerebrum, it is the largest part. So go back to that picture. Cerebrum is all up here. Cerebellum's right here. And your brainstem is just this, I sometimes call it a lollipop because it's just this little stick. Um, so your cerebrum is the largest piece. It's going to be where your memory is stored, um, how you move, when you move, your impulses from these senses. So if you like spicy, um, maybe that's changed over time. In the cere cerebrum, it's gonna change. That's where it's changing. Your memory is so stored. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Inside Out, this is where they, they create those core memories. Um, and it's also going to be your, your movements. It could be large movements, it could be small movements. So it's all this piece up here. So when you're looking at um, a movie or a show, that's what they're showing most often because that's what we think of when we see a, a brain. Um, and that's gonna be, if we pulled it apart, we could make it go pretty far. Um, typically though, that's, that's what we're gonna see. All right, the cerebellum, <clears throat> that's going to, all of those neurons that come in into the brain, the cerebellum is going to be the one that receives it and figures out where does it go in the rest of the brain. Um, it's going to do your muscle tone. So um, this is your gross motor skills. Uh, so walking um, in a straight line, this is going to be hopping on one foot. If you weight lift, if you run, uh, swimming is a big thing for the cerebrum or cerebellum, I'm sorry. Um, so this is where it's at. It's all back here. So this is why it's important for like uh, dogs and other animals. They have this. Um, this basic part right here isn't needed for other like amphibians. All right, now the brainstem. This is the piece that you need to, to protect the most. Um, it's got a couple different pieces to it. It's gonna have, um, it's gonna be where your neurons come from your senses all the way up to the brain. They have to, everything goes through the brainstem. Um, and it's gonna look at uh, what is in, included in all of these things. Now your medulla, it's going to uh, control your breathing. This is your fight or flight. So when you are, say you get into a fight and you panic, the, um, the medulla is gonna be the one that either makes your heart race or it's gonna slow it down. Um, it's going to also help um, with your level of consciousness. If you've ever been somebody to black out, this piece is the piece that you mess with when you do that. Uh, your pawns are going, we're going to talk about it in a second. Um, this is the bridge. It's a Latin word. Congratulations, you know a Latin word. Um, <clears throat> and it's right above the medulla. And it's going to also, all of this is part of the connecting piece from your spine and your senses to your brain. Um, even your eyes, the senses from your eyes and the ears, that's also going to go through this area, um, even though it doesn't make sense for it to go that way. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. We've got movement up here. But, oh, we've got balance back here. So if you've ever hit your head on something and your balance gets all messed up, that's because of right here. Your occipital lobe is right here. That means your vision. So when you get smacked, again, if you um, fell and hit your head and you hit the back of your head, you are going to hit either the balance portion so you can't stand upright, or you're going to hit your vision so you see black. Um, your sensory cortex is up, up top. And then your perception. Now, Reality and perception are two vastly different things, or sensation and perception, two vastly different things. Um, and your memory is gonna be over here. 
in your temporal lobe and you've got your all of your thinking and rational stuff is up at the front. This is the last to solidify, um, which is why doing anything illegal before you are of age is so frowned upon because once you do the illegal things, this part of your brain gets real messed up. Um, I'll post that. All right, so your older brain structures. We've talked about this a little bit. It's gonna be down here in your brainstem um, and it's your automatic survival. That's why I keep saying it's like a snake brain. Oh, that's a bad picture. All right, we've talked about the medulla oblongata. If you like the movie Waterboy, it's go find the, the clip. It's actually really funny. Um, and it's going to be these basic pressures or basic um, things in your body. This is what the doctors automatically check for. Um, your heart rate, you can, your heart and your lungs are all muscles. So you should be working them out or um, exercising them on some level. So you can lower this one and control this one. Now your blood pressure is going to correlate to your stress level and to how you handle that stress. It can be controlled um, naturally if that's what the, the course you want to take or it can be controlled through medication. Um, your pawns, remember it's the pieces that are going to connect. You've got uh, a lot of pawns that you have to look at, but it is going to um, control your facial features. Now, uh, I have a really bad joke that says when I am really upset, I, ha I, I can control my mouth, but I can't control my facial expressions. Um, and if we ever get back in class, you'll see that I, uh, am, when I'm happy, you're going to tell. If I'm upset, you're going to tell. And that's just because um, I don't choose to control it. Um, it is something that can be learned and it, I can learn it. I just choose not to. All right, you've got your thalamus. Now the thal thalamus is in your forebrain. And this is going to, um, this is a switchboard. The thalamus is going to collect everything. This is all of your senses coming into the same place and your thalamus is gonna send it to the right home. So if I am seeing something too bright, um, my brain is taking that in and almost automatically it's telling me to either close my eyes, squint my eyes or put my sunglasses on everything but smell so we've got um sorry so so we've got your sight taste hearing and touch um smell is the only weird one just because of where it goes your limbic system um still in the brain but look at it it's the emotional control center so your emotions are a brain function uh, and you can control it, you just have to think about it, which is an odd way to look at it. You've got your hypothalamus, your amygdala, and your hippocampus. Now these three pieces are what makes your control, the emotional control system. Uh, and we'll get into those three in a little bit. Oh, here's your hypothalamus. Now, this is super tiny. Um, and it's going to look at how hot or cold you are. Um, it's also going to talk about your sexual arousal, libido, um, your endocrine system. But it's tiny. It's right here. Here's the back of your head. Your ear should be right here. It's right here. It's tiny. But it controls so much of who and how you uh, react. Your hip hippocampus and your amygdala. Um, the hippocampus is memory. The amygdala is basic emotions. Now, if we combined all of those three, um, your past experiences, depending on which theory you go by, your past experiences or your memory is going to affect your basic emotions and it's, gonna it's going to um, affect these. So if you've never dealt with something before, then you you have your first reaction and you're curious or you're scared of it. Um, and you're gonna be cautious. Every child is cautious of something brand new. Watch a child who has never touched something furry. Watch a child who's never touched something cold. They don't know how to react, 
until it's been imprinted in their brain.